Frodo, Pippin, and Sam made their way back to the parlor. Mary wasn't there, and not until they'd puffed up the embers of the fire into a blaze did they discover that Strider had come with them and was calmly sitting in a chair by the door. Hello. Who are you? I am called Strider. Your friend promised to have a quiet talk with me, but of course I have my price. What do you Don't mean? Don't be alarmed. I mean just this. I will give you some good advice, but I shall want a reward. And what will that be, pray? Well, no more than you can afford. Just this. You must take me along with you until I wish to leave you. Oh, indeed. I'd need to know a good deal more about you and your business. Excellent. You seem to be more sensible now. You've been much too careless so far. I'll tell you what I know and leave the reward to you. I'm looking for a hobbit called Frodo Baggins. I had learned that he was carrying out of the Shire, well, a secret that concerned me and my friends. What do you say? Oh, look out, Mr. Under, uh, Underhill, sir. Now, I shall take more care of the secret than you do, and care is needed. Watch every shadow. Dark horsemen have passed through Bree. On Monday, one came down the Greenway, they say, and another appeared later, coming up the Greenway from the south. And the landlord seems to have heard something, too. Why on earth did we behave so foolishly? I would have stopped you going into the common room, but the innkeeper wouldn't let me in to see you. Do you think he... No, I don't think any harm of old Butterbur. He doesn't like my sort. After all, I do have a rascally look about me, haven't I? I hope we shall get to know one another better. When we do, I hope you will explain your little prank. It was sheer accident. I wonder. Accident or no, it has made your position dangerous. The horseman will return. I know these riders. A horseman will watch the open road night and day. You may escape from Bree, but you won't go far. They'll come on you in the wild in some dark place where there is no help. Do you wish them to find you? They are terrible. Terrible. He looks like he's in pain. Look at his hands, all clenched. There now. You don't yet fear your pursuers enough. Tomorrow you will have to escape, if you can. And Strider can take you by paths that are seldom trodden. Will you have him? By your leave, Mr. Frodo, I'd say no. This Strider here comes out of the wild, and that's no reason to let him lead us into some dark place, far from help, as he puts it. Well, I need to know more of your story. And why the disguise? Who are you? Your voice has changed. And how do you know about my... my business? To trust me is now your only chance to get to Rivendell. And my story... I beg pardon, sir. I've come to bid you good night. Um, sir, I'm a busy man, and I was asked to look out for a hobbit name of Baggins in particular, and go on by the name of Underhill... And that seems to fit you well enough, if I may say so. He even described you, sir, did Gandalf. Gandalf? Yes, sir. Now, where was I one thing and another? Um, oh, yes. I have a letter I was to have sent, but I put it by safe. And then I couldn't find nobody willing to go to the Shire, and then there was these dark men looking for Baggins and that ranger Strider asking questions, too. He came to offer me his help. If I was in your plight, I wouldn't take up with a ranger. Then who would you take up with, Butterbur? A fat innkeeper who only remembers his own name because people shouted at him all day. Strider, will you go with him? Me? Leave Bray, I wouldn't do it for any money. Anyway, what are these horsemen after? I'm not sure, but I fear they come from... They come from Mordor. <sighs> from Mordor, Barlaman, if that means anything to you. Or oh, save us. That's the worst news that has come to Bree in my time. I must go and bar the doors quick. You do want looking after and no mistake. Good night. Spooks or no spooks, they won't get in the pony so easy. Don't you worry till the morning. Good night, Mr. Baggins. <clears throat> Mr. Underhill, I should say. Well, are you going to open that letter? The seal's intact, at least, and it's Gandalf's own. He wrote it here at the pony. Hmm. Dear Frodo, bad news has reached me here. I must go off at once. Leave Bag End soon, before the end of July. July? 
You can trust the landlord and may meet a friend of mine on the road called by some strider. Hmm. Make for Rivendell, where if I do not come, Elrond will advise you. Yours in haste, Gandalf. P.S. Do not use it again, not for any reason whatever. Do not travel by night. P.P.S. Make sure it is the real strider. There are many strange men on the roads. Then there's a verse. Mm -hmm. What is your name, your true name, Strider? I am Aragorn, son of Arathorn. And if by life or death I can save you, I will. My broken sword will be forged anew, as your verses say, I think. So, that is settled then. Tomorrow we shall make for Weathertop, a hill halfway from here to Rivendell. Still, only the enemy would have hindered Gandalf, and I'm troubled for the first time since I've known him. But don't give up hope. This business of ours will be his greatest task, and he is greater than you Shire folk know. It's Mr. Merry, sir. It must be. Oh, oh, I've seen them. Frodo, I've seen them. Black Riders. Black Riders? Oh. Where? Here in Bree. Oh, I no. sat here for a bit, then went out. I felt something near me, then it slid away, and I followed it. It seemed to draw me. You have a stout heart, but it was foolish. Who would... This is a friend of Gandalf's. I'll explain later. Oh, the help found me. It was as if I'd had an ugly dream. I don't know what came over me. I do. Their breath. Now they will all know the news. You must all stay here and not go to your rooms tonight. Nob can put bolsters in your beds and mats for your hair. I'll build up the fire and blow out the candles. And you must sleep. As they prepared for sleep in the inn at Bree, darkness lay on Buckland. A mist strayed in the dells and along the river bank. The house at Crick Hollow, which Frodo and his companions had left now so many days ago, stood silent. Fatty Bolger opened the door cautiously and peered out. As he stared out into the gloom, a black shadow moved under the trees. Terror seized him. He shrank back. Then he shut and locked the door. Fatty Bolger had not been idle. As soon as he saw the dark shapes creep from the garden, he knew that he must run for it or perish. He was found at the nearest house, crying and babbling. Oh, no, 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 not me. I haven't got it. I haven't got it. <laughs> so the brandy bucks blew the horn call of Buckland that had not been sounded for a hundred years. The dark shapes fled from the house. They rode like a gale to the north gate. Let the little people blow. Sauron would deal with them later. Meanwhile, they had another errand. They knew now for certain that the house was empty and the ring had gone. They rode down the guards at the gate and vanished from the shire.